I was asked to speak about the nexus. What are the, the major trends that are at the intersection of science, health, and biotechnology? And what I'd like to do is really give you my perspective as someone who has seen um, uh, the, the spectrum of requirements that are emerging right now in science, in health, and in, uh, in industry, in biotechnology. So uh, there are, in my opinion, there are fundamentally three challenges that one needs to talk about uh, as we look forward in this century uh, as to the role of the life sciences. I really, um, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to have been preceded by Dr. Evans because the issues of ethics and use and science are going to become even more important as we go forward in towards a transformation of how we even deliver healthcare. But the uh, three challenges that are intertwined are the healthcare challenge, the science challenge, and the industry challenge. And I'd like to first and foremost tell you from the standpoint of healthcare where the challenges are. There's been a major change in the landscape of disease over the past 50 years. Uh, we used to have uh, many more people suffering from acute, short-term, often lethal diseases in the past, and we're going now to a period of time where because of progress in medicine, there's a shift from more acute to more chronic conditions, diabetes that uh, will affect someone for decades, and other diseases, heart disease, and so on. So that is a major driver of the change in healthcare and therefore the change in science and the change in industry. The second is that in developed economies, aging of the population is driving a set of new challenges, new diseases that we have to tackle. Neurodegenerative diseases are gonna become very important. And in many developing countries, what we're seeing is what we call the, the double um, uh, the double um, distribution of diseases where you're seeing diseases of uh, infections and emerging and re-emerging infections as well as diseases of the developed world. So there's a double uh, requirements, uh, requirement for uh, managing healthcare in that, uh, st in that context. Another issue that affects public health systems is the disparity that you will see even within developed economies between inner city care and, and outer city care and different socioeconomic strata. And health disparities tend to drive, in fact, inefficiencies in the system and tend to make our systems a lot more difficult to manage. And then we have, we're dealing with emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases. I think the world knows that we are more vulnerable today than we were many years ago because of global travel and the breakdown between environmental barriers in human populations with new reservoirs of uh, potential infectious agents that are appearing. We've had over 20 new uh, infectious diseases that have occurred over the past um, 20 years in areas of the world where those diseases were not known. So we see that that is a major trend in the challenge of health. And then obviously we are dealing with also emerging non-communicable diseases. The typical one is obesity, but we see uh, a huge impact of, of mental health in many societies today. And if you look uh, at the WHO uh, projections, the number one cause of disability actually in individuals between the ages of 25 and 44 uh, is going to be mental health disorders. So we have to be cognizant of the fact that the landscape of, of requirements is changing as well. Now obesity is a very good prototype of what you would call a disconnect between our genetics and our environment. The environment that we deal with, we live in has changed so fast that our genetic evolution just can't keep up with it. And it's always interesting to really try to balance what is the genetic comp comp component in terms of human variability, why are people subjected to the same environment, reacting differently, and yet at the same time trying to understand what are the drivers that have affected the environment so much that we're seeing this epidemic of obesity worldwide. It's not just a developed country phenomenon with attached comorbidities, diabetes, heart disease, renal disease, and so on. So as a matter of fact, we try to do an experiment to try to separate genetics uh, from 
uh, from, uh, from environment. And I show you here the sta statue of Michelangelo's de David. And it's a statue that has no genes in it. And so we tried to do a study of the environment. And the statue actually visited the United States for about a year. And this is what happened after one year <laughs> in the United States. So it's clearly that there is a significant effect of uh, the environment, for sure, and dependent of genetics. However, I think to, to really look forward and see, as far as health is concerned, where the major thought leaders are thinking about uh, directing healthcare for the next 20, 30 years, is really to move from the old paradigm of medicine, which has been the paradigm for 5,000 years, which is wait for the patient to become ill, sick, in pain, for them to come to the doctor. And that paradigm has driven health and healthcare and science, actually, for a long time. But we recognize now that if we are going to tackle the diseases of the modern age, you really have to intervene many years before the disease strikes. And this is what we call the change from a curative to a preemptive paradigm where in fact many conditions of deterioration of biological systems can be ameliorated if you could intervene early. The best example is heart disease or diabetes. Diabetes does not occur overnight. It occurs over many, many years, and there is a over 80% likelihood of reversing the disease if you catch it very early. So you have to be able to be predictive about who is, going to, who is likely to develop the disease and then you have to be able to intervene at that individual level in a fa fashion that's preemptive. That's what we call the new paradigm is the four P's of medicine, which is predictive, personalized, and preemptive medicine, which means by definition that you will be healthy as you're entering in contact with this healthcare system. And therefore you'll have to participate much more actively than today. And if we are hoping to control the disease burden that we're likely to see, Healthcare costs are the number one cause of above uh, economic uh, growth expenditures in all economies, not just the developed economies. And if you look at the market size of healthcare today, uh, it just in the United States, it's about $2.2 trillion, but worldwide, it's about four, four and a half, and it will double in the next 10 years, no matter what we do. So in some ways, it's a great challenge for policymakers it's a great opportunity for, for industry, for biotechnology, for new ideas to provide solutions that we do not have uh, today. Simply said, if we practice medicine as we know it today, 25 years from now, we will have failed. There's no way that you can sustain uh, the cost and burden of disease with the current methods that we have. And that means that there is a scientific challenge we have to overcome. And the scientific challenge fundamentally relates to complexity. As we have learned more and more about the molecular pathways of disease, you have seen uh, uh, Dr. Evans' description of the transcription factors and the control and regulation of a cell from uh, embryonic to fully differentiated. Those understanding are just not as advanced as we would like them to be to the point where it's very hard to actually understand predictively what the, um, the, 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 the what biological systems are doing. We're making great progress, but this is where the frontier is. And we need to have a mechanistic understanding of diseases in humans. And what is appearing is that diseases are not homogeneous. They are very heterogeneous. And from the standpoint of medical observation, a disease may look exactly the same. And yet from the standpoint of its molecular pathway, it may be very different. So I think we're going to see a very important effort at reclassification of diseases so that we can understand them at a much deeper level uh, mechanistically than we do today. That will lead, we hope, to more effective translation strategies and a more uh, systematic approach uh, to uh, the science that is required today.